Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of the Gamut Network. I am so excited to have my friend Joe Slaninka on the phone today. Oh, sorry, on video today. Um, Joe has been incredibly supportive of everything that we're doing, and I am so excited to have you on the show, Joe. So welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Great to be with you. Thank you. Joe, can you tell us a little bit about your story, your journey, everything about Joe? Sure. Okay. All right. Um, I was born with spina bifida and hydrocephalus. I use a, a manual wheelchair uh, to get around. Um, I, when I was born, my parents really didn't expect me to have a disability. Um, so when I uh, was born, it was quite a surprise. The doctors really didn't give me much of a chance of survival. Um, they told my parents that I wouldn't live to be uh, more than two years old. Uh, here I am talking with you, I'm 49. Mm -hmm. um, I went through uh, public school. Uh, I was the only kid with a disability in my entire district. So I, I got beat up and teased a lot. I uh, made fun of, you know, um, for being different, for being an alien, you know, things like that. Um, Can things we pause there for a second? From, I want to ask a couple questions about that. First of all, unfortunately, the screen is frozen. Are you able to see me? Yeah, I see you. All right, well, 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 you get to see your handsome face, and, and that is just as good. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about, first of all, um, can you just quickly describe spina bifida in case we have anybody watching that doesn't know what that is? Sure. Uh, basically, with spina bifida, um, I had a hole in my back, and where that hole was, the spinal cord pr protruded out of my body, and the the nerves that were in that area were damaged. Mm -hmm. The nerves that were damaged have to do with the mobility in my legs. Um, so it's something like, uh, it, I can describe it as like a ball of yarn that a cat would play with. And for a doctor to go in there and try and untangle it, they can make it worse. So they kind of just leave it alone. And as you grow up, uh, you, you're supposed to hit a lot of those milestones, mm. you know, feeling and moving and mobility and things like that. And as I grew up, I wasn't able to hit some of those milestones. So they kind of guessed that, you know, okay, the nerves that were damaged have to do with the mobility in my legs. Got it. Okay. And so, you know, I'm the same age as you. I know you're all very surprised you thought I was much younger. Um, but I am the same age as you. And I think the world obviously was a very different place um, back then. So can you just tell us a little bit about what, what, what were the kids making fun of you for? They were, they, because you were different, because you were in a wheelchair. What, talk us through that time of life. Okay. Well, when I was younger, I, um, I actually started out in like the, the Forrest Gump braces, yeah. you know, all the way up to the hip. Uh, I was never able to uh, participate in phys ed or sports and things like that. Um, I do have a shunt in my head from hydrocephalus. So that kept me out of school for quite a bit. You know, when the shunt breaks down, I have to have surgery to get it replaced. Um, so I was out of school more than I was in school. Um, and really just because of the braces and the not being able to participate like a quote unquote regular kid, kids just made fun of me. It was just something to, for them to make fun of. Do you think um, that it's different now? If you were in school in 2020, I, I'm hoping that I, I can guess the answer, but I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Yes, it, it definitely is. Actually at Viscardi, I have a group um, called the Viscardi Ambassadors, and uh, I teach my kids uh, public speaking, and we do what I call Disability Awareness Days, mm. and we go to schools, public schools, and talk about disabilities and, and the speciality of the Henry Viscardi School, and I definitely see that there's more acceptance in today's world of somebody with a disability than there was 
30 years ago. Um, I'm very pleased to hear that answer. I was hoping that's what it would be. But uh, can you also share with us a little bit about the Viscardi Center um, and what your role is there? Sure. The, uh, I work at the Henry Viscardi School. Uh, it is part of the Viscardi Center. Um, Dr. Henry Viscardi Jr. was a, a man that was born without legs uh, below his knees, and he wanted to create a place where a kid with a disability could go and have a good, safe, quality education. He also wanted to help adults with disabilities um, get back into the workforce after an injury. Um, you know, after World War II, a lot of the uh, soldiers were coming back injured, and he wanted to give them an opportunity to get back into society as a, a viable person. Um, at the school, we teach kids uh, with physical disabilities um, from grades kindergarten to 12th grade. Uh, we are a regional school, so our kids come from Nassau, Suffolk, the Five Rows, and Westchester. And that's all New York, everybody, in case you're, you're chiming in from around the world. That's all in New York. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, you are a student at our school because for whatever reason, your home district can't or won't meet your needs. It could be as simple as I live in Brooklyn and I have a disability. I use a wheelchair. I can't get into the building because there's no ramp or elevator. Mm. It could be because of my disability, I learn differently and I need different types and specialized uh, equipment that my home district might not have. Or it could be that my disability is such that I need something better than a nurse's station where you get a, a, a Band-Aid and a Tylenol. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot more specialized equipment to take care of our kids medically. And what do you teach specifically? Actually, I'm not a teacher. Uh, I'm, an, you know, I'm an assistant teacher. Okay. Um, basically, I take care of the, we have a free breakfast program and a free lunch program. I'm in charge of 20 different staff members that are specifically trained to feed our kids. Um, and that allows me to do a lot of the fun stuff, like the disability awareness days. I coach wheelchair basketball. Um, I get out in the community and I talk about who we are and what we are, what we do and, um, you know, do a lot of advocacy, advocacy. I get to go up to Albany quite a lot and talk to the policy makers, uh, about us and convince them that it's the right thing to do to, uh, support us, you know, when it comes to how, for the budgets and things like that. That's, I mean, all very, very important. I, I, I'm curious for my um, own interest, and I'm sure everybody is thinking the same things. How is the Viscardi School managing this, the, the um, shelter in place and social distancing? Are you able to still have school? Uh, we, we were shut down as a school on March 13th. Uh -huh. uh, so we're doing distance learning. Um, it's something new and different, like everybody else. Um, so yeah, as, as of March 13th, we were shut down and we were told that we wouldn't return until at least April 20th, mm -hmm. which was right after our spring break. Um, so the teachers are doing what they have to do, um, you know, by computers and things like that, sending work back and forth to the kids. Um, hopefully, you know, having the kids having their own. Uh, computers and things like that. You know, that's the tough part. You know, making sure that the kids are set up at school, at home, like they are at school. Absolutely, and the fact that they are also medically fragile, which you right. know adds a, an entire layer of, of worry right. and complication to everything. Right. So, and mom and, and mom and dad still have to go to work. Right. So they have to find the help. Yeah, it gets a little bit more complicated for us than a regular public school. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping that for you guys specifically that everything goes back to normal as soon as possible. Um, you shared with us a little bit about the fact that you're, you also teach uh, wheelchair basketball and I know that sports are very important to you. Can you um, share with us a little bit about 
how this has helped you in your journey having the outlet of sports i know you do a lot you do the the hockey sled what's that called sled, sled hockey. hockey sled hockey yeah. wheelchair basketball i mean i think there's not a lot of sports that you don't do but can you tell us a little bit about that sure sure so so growing up you know i wasn't able to play a lot you know in any sports um we didn't really know about uh disabled athletics when i was a kid um I wasn't introduced to uh, wheelchair basketball until I was in college. I went to uh, Stony Brook University and I met my first friend with a disability. And she basically said, L listen, you're in a wheelchair, so what? Let's go play some basketball. Mm -hmm. And she put, she put a basketball in my hand and I fell in love with the game. Um, I was able to meet a lot of uh, boys and girls, men and women. Uh, that are in my similar situation, and they were able to introduce me to other games, other sports. Uh, so I was able to um, gain a lot of friendships. Uh, I do a lot of traveling. I uh, had the opportunity to travel to Ireland a couple of years. Oh my gosh, wow, through the basketball? Play basketball. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so, and every game that I was introduced to, I just fell in love with. And, you know, the first time I, you know, picked up a basketball, I was 18. I'm now 49, and I can't stop playing. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, played sled hockey. I played now uh, wheelchair lacrosse. Uh, I've done the New York City Marathon a couple of times, the Long Island Marathon a couple of times. I even qualified for Boston one year. Holy cow. Uh, yeah, That's it was pretty cool. I didn't, even, I didn't even mean to do it. I just got a letter in the mail one day. Hey, you qualified for Boston. So I guess, uh, I said, all right, I guess I got to do Boston. So uh, wait, let me just pause there for a second because um, I think most able-bodied people don't even do half of what you just mentioned, let alone one half of time in their life. So I think that it's very important to underscore that it doesn't sound like there isn't much you can't do. And you have no, absolutely. A way to do things that you never were able to do when you were growing up. And I think that is so um, important for our audience and our viewers to really understand that you're, you have the same life needs, wants, hopes, dreams as everybody else. And you're living the best life you could live right now. Absolutely. absolutely. Everything you just said, everything you just said is absolutely true. Yeah, uh, I I look at sports as you know a way that helped me get into life, um, you know, to be that viable part of society that I can participate, I can be active, you know, I'm not just sitting home, you know, eating bonbons watching Oprah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and if you could, if you could go back to your younger self when it was really tough. You know, the kids were just not being so nice and not understanding the position that you were in. What would you say to yourself? Uh, I would say, forget them, all right? Things can and things will get better. Um, just give yourself the opportunity uh, to explore life. Um, don't say no, you know, if something mm -hmm. comes up, say yes. You know, you, whether you wind up liking it or not, just say yes and gain the, uh, the experience. You know. I love that. And actually a previous um, guest of ours also used that phrase. And that's, that's interesting that you said that, that that is really um, what got him up and out was just finally saying yes when he was so used to saying no because he was afraid to try something and he really feel felt i believe he called it the power of yes and what that did for him and it sounds like that that is something extremely important um in your journey as well and i'm sure your younger self couldn't believe that they he would be traveling the world playing wheelchair basketball yeah, yeah i even had the opportunity and i took it uh to become a certified scuba diver and i've jumped out of airplanes Oh my God. 
I even got up on a runway for you one one time. That's you correct. Know, that, you did. You yes, owned I that did. runway. Yep. I mean, yep. so, really. Again, think, that was, again, that, you know, going, getting up on the runway, from runway of dreams was just something that I never thought possible. And there and you were. you are. Lighting and it here up. you are. I get to meet you. And you said, yeah, it's possible. Yes, exactly. The power, the power of yes. The power of yes. I love it. I love it. Thank you for that, Joe. And before we go, I like to ask all my guests, I am a very big believer in the vision board. Um, I have some very big dreams and big ideas of who I'm going to meet or talk to or whose couch I'm sitting on, like Ellen's. Um, who or what would be on your vision board? I wouldn't mind sitting on Ellen's couch. <laughs> yeah, good. You'll join me then. Yeah, You'll come absolutely. On me. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I don't know. I. I I just continue uh, living my life, you know, the power of yes. I'm going to keep using that now. Um, just, you know, whatever opportunities are out there, I'm going to give it a shot. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to live uh, in regret. Nor should you. But if there's like one place that you want to visit or some goal that you want to reach, what would that be? <sighs> hmm. Cool. I would like to be a part of the movement where disability is not thought of, of as something negative. Mm, I love, well, um, guess what? That's already here. You're doing it. That's why we're doing this show. To well, really still needs, there still work. needs some work to be done. We yeah. still got to get some work done. Absolutely. Well, you're on the right path, and I really believe in our lifetime we're going to see that. For sure. And I thank you so much, Joe, for being on the show. I always love seeing you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And if you would like to be on the Gamut Network, please email us at talent at gametmanagement.com and tell us why you would be a great guest. Thanks so much. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mindy. Bye. Bye-bye. Be safe. You too.